Hi Johan, thanks so much for coming to visit us here in the Northern Rivers. I know you've come a, a long way, <laughs> but we appreciate it. It's fantastic. It's, it's just great to see some sunshine. Yeah, we have. Oh no... my goodness, after coming from <laughs> Melbourne. Oh. Yeah. Well, you got lucky because it's been nothing but rain here for seriously like the yeah. last six months. So this is the biggest window of sun we've had in a long time. Oh my goodness, yeah. we've seen it, of course, in, in the news on the UK. Mm. Disaster. Yeah, yeah, look, it has been, but you know, the, the, the community is repairing and we're just trying to look to the future now and, and uh, try to rebuild ourselves really. Fantastic. So tell us a bit about yourself. What's your, what's your history? How did you get into audio and how did you fall in love with Oh boy, you've got three hours. Um, <laughs> well, to cut a long story short, um, started working in the industry in a shop luckiest bloke in the world because working with my hobby <laughs> which i which i still do we have um, a, ha a habit of turning our hobbies into our jobs we? <laughs> well it is a really lucky thing yeah. because you know you spend a lot of time working mm. uh, might as well do it with your help you know it's been my my major hobby for years still is What kind of music are you into uh, at the moment? Do you have a genre or an album you're really enjoying at the moment? Yes, um, the, the, the taste in music, certainly with myself, but I think with a lot of people, mm. tends to change as one ages. One of the things which personally infuriates me is when you ask somebody uh, what kind of music you like and they go, oh, I like everything. <laughs> It, which basically means Sorry. <laughs> which basically means don't really uh, don't really care anyway I digress as I've got older about 60% of stuff I listen to is what can be largely classified as classical music okay. um, and the other 40% is um, hip-hop techno dub reggae and wow. kind of uh, and, and experimental jazz electronic cool. uh, my big lack in my taste is metal rock yeah. i'm not a rock boy at all but <laughs> i was a reggae dj and uh, uh i was such you know still okay. that still lives with me so yeah. weird taste yeah well it's really interesting the two polar ends there yeah do you, do you find your you know, you use one to sort of, you know, when you're in sort of an upbeat mood, you might listen to, you know, the, the reggae no, no, or the hip hop. Not really. Or... When I'm, now when I'm working, yeah. home office, you know, in my yeah, sure. study, I've got BBC Radio 3 on probably mm. in the background, classical, very low volume. Mm. It's fantastic. Are you a concert goer? I mean, I know it's difficult yes. with COVID, but yeah. <laughs> The last concert I went to see was only a couple of months ago. I was so delighted. Mm. I invited my my wife. Uh, I went to the full Bach St. Matthew Passion. Yeah. And she goes, I said, do you want to come? She goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, warning. Uh, it's quite long. She, uh, she said, how long? I said, four and a half hours. Yeah. Well. And she said, I'll pass. <laughs> um, but no, no, no. Frank Zappa. Yeah. Saw him about four times. Yeah, Prince was great. God rest his soul. Oh, it's one concert uh, I wish I'd seen. Uh, oh, Prince was loved fabulous. Yeah. The, the one guy I'd really love to see at the moment, and I've always missed him, is it's interesting because he's like classical electronic crossover. It's a guy called Max Richter. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard Film him. music. Max Richter is known for a lot of film mm. theme sort of music. Okay. He, Big time now. Disturbs some pure classical lovers because he mixes it in with electronic and... Yeah. Uh, Experimental. Yeah, 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 kind of, yeah. Yeah, nice. So... 
you know, going from the, I suppose, the, the constant the live um, atmosphere, is that something you try to replicate in your own system at home? What does what your system look like? Which system? <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> How yeah, many you got? <laughs> my office study has become like a kind of a, well, there's four systems in there. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's become a kind of a lab. But if we talk about, say, so, of course, Hegel. There's the technical aspect of it that the raw measurements and what Hegel is known for is extremely high damping factor, mm. which means it can drive virtually anything. Um, but also they're trying to achieve technically very low distortion, high dynamic capability. But the Hegel sound is kind of very, very linear. Mm -hmm. There are certain products in our view where you walk in a room and you just go, whoa, that's blowing my socks off. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic for five minutes. Yeah. I describe personally the Hegel sound more as it draws you in more. Mm -hmm. We feel it's really important that you can listen for a very, very long time. Yeah, it's, it's something that's not immediately in your face, but as yeah. you sit down and listen, you, yeah. you, you yeah. get more involved. Exactly. I find it really interesting that you, um, the way that you describe the Hegel sound, because uh, it's quite often exactly how I describe it. I find it uh, very linear. And uh, one thing that I've always assumed, but never really known the answer to was, what makes Hegel so compatible with so many speakers? I assumed it was that extremely high damping, damping factor. Damping factor. And if we look at, for example, what you've got here, in this case, the little Hegel with probably the best sold mini monitor on the planet mm. for the last few years, and that's the Kef LS50, a classic loudspeaker, mm. not the easiest to drive. Pretty low sensitivity. Uh, well, yeah, it's not so much to do with sensitivity. Okay. When we were dealing with, you know, the days of 25 watt amplifiers yeah. with very low damping factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, these are, what are they? I've forgotten about 86 dB. I think so. Most something. amps can drive them, but it's about, these are beautifully engineered loudspeakers, but getting getting the maximum out of them. Mm. I've, I've followed myself. I use a pair of these in my study and I've gone over the top. I started with an H120 Hegel yeah. amp yeah. and then I moved to the 190, which is a big leap. Mm. You know, double the damping factor. And then I moved to the 390, which has got better DAC and the, the way to drive speakers better and more watts. Mm. And now, believe it or not, it's a bit over the top, but I drive these with an H590, which is like really weird because- Well, I mean, you can, so you do, right? <laughs> I suppose so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> been to dozens of shows what was the one system that you saw that you just went wow what was the combination honestly mm. just blown away and still continue to be so mm -hmm. Hegel monoblocks mm -hmm. the big h30 monoblocks yeah the, the with 200 ton ones yes yeah with <laughs> kef the the blade ones mm. madness you know yeah that's an expensive system you know two big monoblocks and the blades are not a cheap loudspeaker they're a flagship loudspeaker but within the scheme of things there there's stuff out there which is five ten times more systems which just don't cut it Mm. This is just like, this was wow. Yeah. Uh, and that was the system that was put together in, I think it was Seattle, yeah. where I first experienced it. Yeah. It is uh, something that's for me really important is the, the matching of components. You know, mainly the, the amplifier to the speakers. It's reasonably well known that Hegel and Kef work 
well yeah. together. Why, why is that? Is, well, is it a fluke or was it somehow intentional from well, the brands? No, it was an interesting coincidence. My own personal first exposure to Hegel because I'd worked for KEF for a very, very long time mm -hmm. was actually in the KEF engineering department. I'm just, what's that? That German philosopher, it was an anonymous looking mm. gray box with the name Hegel on it. And they went, oh, we use that for measuring. I said, well, what do you mean? They said, well, it's got such a low noise floor. It's almost immeasurable distortion. So we use it as a measuring tool. And then that was my ex first exposure to Hegel. And then I got to know the guys and bought an amp and the rest is history. It's an interesting development because Hegel is still a tiny, tiny company. Yeah, they are quite, you know, I suppose. There's 11, and a, there's 11 and a half people. Oh, wow. Hegel. I'm the yeah. half. Cause, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but exactly. I think there's something romantic about a small team like that because you could almost guarantee every single one of those employees would have to be passionate. They'd have to have absolute dedication. Well, absolutely. I think it's actually a prerequisite for the industry. I mean, anybody who's, who's making specialist hi-fi equipment, which is built to reproduce music, the people associated with it had better be genuinely mm. enthusiastic or, you know, mm go home and do something else. I'm a bit, I'm a bit passionate about that. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. You mentioned that the H190 was the sort of one that really stood out as the, the next step up in quality. Would you say that would be the product to you that, that stands out as far as performance and price, you know, I suppose value for money or? Actually, that's a really difficult one to answer mm. uh, because Hegel's like natural steps up. Mm. I mean, even the baby H95, you know, it's a modest looking thing. Uh, we call it baby giant <laughs> in the Hegel marketing blurb. It's fantastic. And the step from the H120 to the H190, um, what you're getting is, okay, it is more expensive, but you're getting double the amount of watts, probably the least important, mm -hmm. but double the damping factor. You know, I mean, even the baby Hegel is damping factor of 2000, the H190 is 4000. And then you move on to the the big boys, the 390 and the 590. The 590 was actually created as the flagship amp and the 390 followed that to try to create as much of the 590 in a considerably less cost package, but to have sort of 90% of the performance. Mm. The 95, the 120 and the 190 share the same DAC. Yeah. It's an upgraded DAC in the 390 and 590. A lot of people are kind of hung up about, oh, which, what DAC do you use? Mm. You know, what is it? Which brand, what model number, DAC? Um, there's much more to DACs as possible. It, all manufacturers do this. Yeah. It's about how you drive the DAC. Mm -hmm. So Hegel writes its, its own operating system to control the DAC and, and the signal from the DAC to the output stages. And then the output stage story of, of Hegel is like any amp is, is meant to do. You take a source voltage, tiny voltage, uh, and in stages, the, the amplification stages are built up to something which can move speaker drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, Hegel's big secret, uh, which is called Music Engine, it's a kind of a feed forward system. What I mean by that is, to put it very simply, at every stage of amplification, Hegel has kind of got this analog computer which analyzes the, the difference between each stage and reverse phases forward. So what you end up with is an absolutely pure output stage amplified version of the original 
tiny mm. source voltage. Phew. Um, <laughs> yeah. You got that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a hard one to explain that one. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting better at it. Yeah. Uh, the Hegel found, Hegel's founder, Bent Halter, he's an engineer and his favorite thing is designing yeah. and creating and he's happiest on the bench. Yeah. There isn't much literature on the topology of Hegel amplifiers. What exactly are they? Are they, are they A, B, are they A, are they G, are they H? AB. They're B. They're A, B. They're A, B. For example, the music engine, which is Hegel's thing, which is patent. A lot of people think it's, oh, it's been done before, it's mm. feedback loop. Um, no, no, it's different, and it's, mm. it's Hegel's thing. So being a small company, quite protective. It would be a lie to say you never see a faulty Hegel, mm. uh, but my goodness, they're really good. And the, the approach by Hegel is in some ways quite conservative, uh, very, very considered, which I think is a strength. Speaking of product releases, I know that um, companies like to keep these things close yeah. to their chest, but what have we got um, to look forward to from Hegel? Is, is there anything new coming? Yeah, at the recent Munich show, we, sh we showed a preview of the brand new P30A H30A. Mm -hmm. Massive stereo amplifier, which can be turned into a proper monoblock. That's been under development. Why did Hegel do it? The H30 is no more. Oh. Totally sold out, can't build it anymore. Okay. The transistor manufacturer no longer exists. Mm. Can't buy the transistors, so I had to design a completely new amp. It's considerably heavier. We've taken the opportunity stylistically not to overdo it. Mm -hmm. The cost goes in the Componentry and mm. the, the end result is bang for the buck. Yeah. But the performance, that's Hegel's reputation. Yeah. So the H30A is a step up, but we've also taken, and the P30A preamp, taken the opportunity to tidy up the, the, the casing. Mm. Um, and the, 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 the front plate is double the thickness, so it's a lot heavier. The feet are much better. <laughs> so we're very excited about that. There is work going on. Mm -hmm. which we did hope to preview by the end of the year, but they ain't going to make it. So oh. this is going to be next quarter. It's quite major work for Hegel as a small company. I can't reveal uh, <laughs> what it's going to be. Um, but Give us it's, the scoop. Come on. It's, <laughs> well, it's very exciting. It, to me, it is something which will, for a very long time, define Hegel's future. You know, the next few years. I don't know how many people, for example, use Rune mm. in in Australia, but it's it's a growing thing, the kind yeah. of photo Photoshop for audio. That's yeah. the way I like to see Rune. Yeah, yeah. But, but very interesting software. H120, H190 are Rune ready and finally mm. we're just about there as I speak. They've gone in for certification, the 390 and 590. That's so great. I know a lot of people have been hanging yeah, out. Yeah, a lot that. of people have been asking. So it's that's, taken that's exciting. forever. Yeah. Well, you got there. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's just about covered everything that I would like to know, and I'm sure our viewers would. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, we it's, really It's a real it. pleasure to come out here. It's like the first time I've personally been in this area since, my goodness, 1985, six, when yeah, I wow. almost drowned in Byron Bay. <laughs> I was a sort of hippie traveler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you survived. <laughs> All right, Jan, thanks so much. Pleasure. Pleasure.